The Powered Paragliding Show. Brought to you in conjunction with Paramotor Magazine. With your hosts, Michael Purdy, Jeff Going, and Paul Anthem. Hi, I'm Michael Purdy. Welcome to The Powered Paragliding Show. We are brought to you in conjunction with Paramotor Magazine and Powered Sport Flying Radio. Okay, I'm going to talk a little bit today about how many flights should you have as part of your powered paragliding training. Okay, I'm talking foot launch now. Wheels are a little bit easier, but in the foot launch environment, how many flights should you have? A lot of companies will give you three or four, maybe five. I submit to you that that is not enough. It's not anywhere near enough. During the first three flights or four flights, these first few flights are not a place to polish technique. They're a place to just get the main pieces in there, get the thing going literally in the right direction, and getting you actually into the air. But during the first few flights, you don't, you're, not, you're not polishing. You're, you're probably, in a lot of cases, you're not even remembering. Those first few flights are really important to just get you going in the right direction. But what's going to teach you how to become a good powered paragliding pilot is repetition. So what's the number? How many flights should you have? Well, it's a lot. Three or four, obviously, is not enough. Five or six, you're getting better. But I'm going to astound you with the number. It's a lot more. It's more than 20. And it's more than 30. It's a lot. But let's justify that, and we'll let that number climb even more. Okay, you're driving down the street. You're eating a hamburger. You're switching the radio stations. And you're watching what's going by. When you were a student driver, there's no way in heck you could do all those things. The reason you can do them now is because driving is almost completely a subconscious event. It's automatic. Same thing for powered paragliding. People say foot launch powered paragliding is really difficult. That's not correct. Yes, it's more challenging to learn, no question. But once you learn, it's easy. I always tell my students, you know, this is a lot easier for me than it is for you because they have not built the habits yet. So back to that number, how many flights should you have? Well, first of all, to answer that question, let's, let's put this premise out there. You don't want to pave the cow path. You don't want to do it in an inefficient way. You want to, first of all, learn the proper technique. Make sure you've got that. So you need a good instructor for that. You not only have to learn those subconscious steps, but here's the thing. It's not about just making those basics automatic, although that's important. Where you become a really good pilot is in the flights that come after, say, the fifth flight. And if you can work closely with your instructor, and if they can watch you, and on every flight, give you another little critique, do this, stand up straight, lean back, don't shuffle your feet. All those little things are things that most pilots just learn over years from watching other pilots, talking to other pilots. But what if your instructor could actually take you there, polish your skills, tell you where you're doing well, and tell you where you're not doing well? How important is that? That's really important. And so the number should be 75. I'm serious. Had a student a number of years ago that kind of helped me start to realize this. Frank Weld, nice guy, good guy. He's, he's an excellent pilot, and when he was learning, he got 75 flights. And you know what? He was really good. He was like a really experienced pilot. But guess what? He was a really experienced pilot. Not only that, he had 75 flights, but he had me watching him and correcting him and polishing his technique. Think how much more efficient that is than getting two, three, four flights, hopefully being confident enough to get into the air, and then you hang around with your friends and you talk to them and they critique you and they help you, and a number of years later you get to be a pretty good pilot. Well, you can be a good pilot by just concentrating on polishing and fixing and do it with your instructor. I'm telling you, 75 flights, that's the magic number. I was looking at Facebook this morning, and what got me thinking about this is there was a post on there by Eric DeFour, probably the best instructor in our country, and he had a guy, Joe, on the video that he had done 72 flights. And the video, it reminded me of Frank Welt. He kited the wing, he finessed it, he turned around, he leaned back, and he took off. And I'm imagining that what Joe learned in those first 72 flights was a lot. He had a really good instructor with a lot of repetition. So I guess the point is, what is the number? Ask your potential instructor, are they USPPA certified? You know, do they use towing or what, what tools do they use in their instruction? 
But you know what? Ask them, how many flights should I expect to get? And if it's two or three, I think that's a big red flag. But, you know, if it gets to be 10 or 15, that's a really good and respectable number and better than most. But I have a suggestion for you. Ask them what it would take. Tell them you want 75 flights. You can cut the landing pattern down. You can do a lot of things to make those really quick flights. Have someone there to start the motor. What would that take? And can that be your goal? Because think about the alternative. If you get five flights in your training and you fly once a week, and that's a high number, especially if you live in a cold area, you know, you've got 50 flights, 52 flights for the year, once a week, plus your five flights. And you know, assuming you're flying with other pilots, you know, by the end of a year, you know, you're going to start to look pretty good and you'll be more consistent on your launches. But it's much more happenstance. And there's no substitute for having a trainer dedicated to you or dedicated to you and a couple other students, but who keeps an eye on every one of your flights and gives you just a little bit of direction, that's better than a year's worth of experience. So if you can leave your training with that much experience, then, I mean, that's a huge thing. So, okay, that's my little secret for the day. Okay, it's not even a secret, call it a tip. But I'm telling you, it's really important. And I strongly suggest that you ask that question and pay close attention to the answer and discuss it thoroughly with a flight instructor before you hire them. If you've already been trained and maybe you've had five or six flights but you don't feel like you really have gotten it, that it's not really internalized, well, it's probably not. That's probably a good feeling to be had. So how do you fix that? Go back and get some more instruction. Be that from a certified USPPA instructor or even from an experienced pilot friend that you have, that'll work too, but have them watch your flights, watch your landings, watch your launches, and critique. Stand up straight, lean back, taxi before you take off, pick up your feet a little more. There are like a hundred little things. So, how many flights should you get with your training? I'm saying 75. If you're still in the mode of finding and hiring your, your trainer, ask that question. If you've already been down that road and you've gotten your flights, then maybe you need to add to your training. Food for Thought, I'm Michael Purdy. You're listening to The Powered Paragliding Show.